God bless you. In today's video, I thought I would just sit down and get ready, put on some makeup. Um, that's not really the focus of this video. I really just want to share with you uh, my latest experience during this pregnancy. And um, yeah, I pray that y'all be blessed. I really hope that you enjoy the video. I have noticed quite the influx of subscribers. So thank y'all so much that have supported my channel. Thank you to those that continue to support my channel. God bless each and every one of you. But yeah, today's video is just going to be... I'm not really going to focus on the makeup products that I'm using. I'm just going to be applying the makeup and just chit-chatting with y'all and let you know what's been going on. So I really hope that you enjoy it. And if you want to hear about my latest experience during this pregnancy, then please just keep on watching. All right. I forgot how to film these videos. I've been doing all these cooking videos. Um, <laughs> so... I'm not really gonna uh, concentrate too much on the products I'm using. I'm just gonna kind of use them as I go. Um, I will try to remember to leave a list of everything that I put on my face down below. And yeah, we're just gonna put on makeup and chit chatting about what's been going on. Well, currently I am. 33 weeks pregnant I am very pregnant <laughs> and we are getting ready for the arrival of baby boy uh, we're super excited super blessed so everything's been going pretty well with the pregnancy I haven't uh, really had any like alarming complications or anything like that I have however had recurring UTIs and um, they say that's normal in pregnancy just because of like the hormones and how your body reacts to the changes and whatnot. Um, and I've had the same thing happen in my other two pregnancies with my daughter and my son. Only they didn't get to the point where they got this time. The, um, the UTIs weren't, they haven't been going away. So I'll go in for my checkup. They'll do the regular urine tests or whatever and it seems that the UTI just will not go away so they put me on medication and I finished the medication and then after I finished the medication I had maybe about another week to my appointment to my next appointment and um, I was okay for the most part, and then on Mother's Day, I woke up with probably the worst excruciating pain on my, like, my lower back. Not, like, super low, but, like, mid to lower back. And it was a little alarming to me because this pain is familiar, right? I felt this pain before. Um, especially when I was pregnant with my son. I had, when I was pregnant with my son, I had developed a UTI so bad that it was <clears throat> a borderline kidney infection. Like, I was almost there to have a kidney infection. Um, so the pain was that bad. It wasn't so bad, like, early in the day. But the more that the day went on, the worse that the pain got. And I mean, it was bad. Like, it had me in tears. That's how bad it was. And I remember Jose telling me we should go to the hospital. Now, ain't nobody trying to go to the emergency room at times like this. And I know I could have called OB triage, but I just it didn't want to do that. I had my appointment the next day. So I didn't really want to fuss and, you know, go into the, um, go to the hospital that night because my pain got worse in the nighttime. And so I was like, I'll just hold off and I'll just wait until, um, 
I'll just hold off and I'll just wait till my appointment because I had an appointment that morning. He's like, okay, but you know, he had to leave for work. And he's like, if anything, just call me, whatever, whatever. Okay, so he left. It was really hard for me to fall asleep. Um, I struggled really bad to fall asleep. I think I fell asleep more comfortably on the couch than I did on my bed. So I slept on the couch. <laughs> Um, the morning came, the pain hadn't subsided, it was still pretty bad. I went into my appointment and um, I told the, the lady, asked me, she's like, how are you feeling? Like, she asked me if I had any symptoms of a UTI and I was like, no. I was like, that, and that's the thing too, is that these recurring UTIs, I had them basically this whole pregnancy and I had no symptoms of them. You know, no burning, no cramping like I had minor cramps but I would just um think that they were uh you know just regular pregnancy cramping like it was nothing alarming and then I told her I was like you know but the only thing that um I was like that my back hurts and she like did these tapping motions here and then when she got to this side oh my gosh when i tell you that it hurt so bad it hurt so bad i literally jumped up and i almost started crying from how bad it hurt from how she hit my uh my back and she's like okay she's like most likely um you have a kidney infection so we're gonna she's like let me go talk to my attending but most likely we're gonna have to have you go into um ob triage and I was like, into the hospital. And I was like, okay, all right, you know, I'm not gonna freak out. <sighs> so she goes and talks to her attending. And then literally a few seconds later, she comes and tells me that I have to go um, just because of the symptoms and signs that I was showing. Um, it was pretty alarming for, for them. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> um, so Jose and I went and mind you, in my regular doctor appointments, um, like for my regular prenatal care, Jose cannot come with me. Um, they do not let any visitors with me. So I was in that appointment by myself and then I asked the doctor, I was like, well, when I go into OB triage, is my husband gonna be able to come in, come in with me? And she's like, yeah, I believe they allow one visitor. Okay, cool. So we get to OB triage and we, um, you know, they screen us, they do all that, all that fun stuff. <laughs> And then um, we get upstairs, they get me, we had to wait a little bit because um, they were kind of full. And then we get to, um, then they put us in a room and then they take blood work, they do another urine test and um, we we're just waiting. It's just a waiting game at this point. So I think we waited like a good two hours almost three before getting an actual result and the second she came into the room with the results she's like yeah she's like you definitely have a kidney infection and she's like your numbers are to the point where you could have gotten really sick had you waited any longer <sighs> and at that point we chose to look at the good and just thank god that it wasn't worse and we caught everything on time um because you know, a kidney infection, a severe kidney infection can result in preterm labor, um, the infection can go through the blood, like so much bad could happen from that. But we just chose to, we just chose to look at the good. Thank God that, you know, we were in the right place at the right time. And, and I mean, to be honest, if I didn't have my appointment so close to like when my symptoms were happening, I would have gone into the hospital and that's what I kept telling Jose. I'm like, please believe that because my pain was really bad. So then she tells me that because I'm getting admitted, I have to um, have a COVID test. And I started asking questions. I was like, um, is that going to hurt? Like, what's the reason for it? Why? You know? And she says, well, just because you're being admitted so you can stay on this floor, you have to test negative. In the event that you test positive, you would get put somewhere else. You know, so you're not, you know, putting anyone else at, like, so you're not putting anyone else at risk of, you know, being infected. 
I was like, okay, fine. <sighs> Y'all, when I tell you, when I tell you that that test has to be probably one of the worst tests I have ever had in my life, I'm not joking. It's this little tiny swab that goes up your nose and I swear it goes like <laughs> into the back of your throat and they swivel it on each side for 15 seconds and while they're doing that they're telling you that you have to swallow which is basically impossible it was so uncomfortable it was so painful I don't know if I'm just being a big baby I don't have a really high pain tolerance for stuff like that especially when I'm in like a hospital setting it just it's not -uh, no <sighs> So then they put me in a room and then I ask about Jose. So she's like, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Um, let me go find out. So she goes to um, to ask if, uh, like, what are the rules for him? And it turns out that because I'm not in active labor, he cannot stay with me. He has to leave. And... <laughs> As soon as they said that, I, and she left the room, like she came back and told us, I started bawling because I had to be there by myself. Now granted, he had to go to work at night, but I was hoping that he could stay with me and then go to work and then come back, you know? But because of everything that's going on, he was not even allowed to stay with me because I'm not in labor. The only way that he could stay with me is if I was in labor. So... Um, he left and he came back really quick because, um, he had, to, he brought me some snacks cause I didn't have like a restricted diet and, uh, a phone charger cause I didn't pack my phone charger cause I mean, I wasn't anticipating spending the night in the hospital <sighs> and he left and I was like, I get teary eyed thinking about it. I'm so, oh, I'm so emotional. And I was like, okay, like what the heck am I going to do now, you know? I turn on the TV, and I'm just flipping through the channels, and I see Impractical Jokers. <laughs> and Impractical Jokers has come through for us in some of our toughest times, and I was just really um, pleasantly, like, I was really happy to see that on the TV, you know? Um, so I just start watching Impractical Jokers, and I put my phone on the charger, let us start getting some juice um, so I could talk to my kids because I hadn't talked to my kids yet. And then, um, yeah, it was just, they were basically just going to give me antibiotics, see how my body responds to them. They did hook me up to an IV just to give me um, added hydration. So it was nothing that I really needed to be like monitored so consistently um they would come in every once in a while check my vitals and then they said that they were going to hook up the baby to the monitor um you know just to make sure that he's doing well and things like that so i was i was pretty <laughs> pretty alone uh, most of the time and um it tweaked me out a little bit because I didn't like, I didn't like to be like that, you know, I didn't like the fact that Jose couldn't stay with me, though, again, and I always say this, I completely understand the safety measures that, um, that they take in the hospital, you know, what they're doing is for my own safety, it's, you know, for the safety of my baby, like, I completely understand that, it just sucks, <laughs> it sucks big time. Um, being pregnant during this time, having a baby during this time, like, it's not what it's supposed to be. It's completely different. The normal, you know, routine of pregnancy checkups and things like that is completely different. It's not what you'd expect. It's not how it was, you know, 10 years ago when I had my daughter or four years ago when I had my son. It's nothing like that. It is completely different. That night was a little rough. It was rough for me to um, to fall asleep. Um, I couldn't, you know, I just, I didn't like being by myself. That was basically it. And um, so there's one point at night that I just, I turn on some worship music and I just, I worshiped God and 
I just worshipped him and thanked him for, you know, keeping uh, my baby and me safe and, you know, protecting us and just trying to focus on not focus, just trying to not focus on the fact that I was there by myself. Because if I focused on that long enough, then I would kind of tweak out, you know? So I kind of just got in his presence and just focus on him <laughs> and focus on the good that, uh, that he has in my life. And, you know, that calmed me a lot. It calmed me a lot. And I was able to um, fall asleep a little bit. Um, I got on and off maybe four or five hours of sleep. Um, and again, that was just because, you know, they kept coming in there every so often to check my vitals and things like that. So, um, so if anything would wake me up, that, that would wake me up. And to be honest, the fact that I was sleeping in a hospital bed, in a hospital room by myself, that would tweak me out too but again I just I really tried to not focus on that so much so the morning came and um a resident came in the room um to check on me again check my vitals and things like that and I asked him I was like hey uh, can museum can go home today like what you know what's gonna determine if I go home or if I stay and he's like well it's a good thing that you haven't spiked a fever um, because had you spiked a fever you would have to stay a mandatory of 48 hours said that as long as my vitals remain you know stable and baby is stable that uh, he doesn't see why I couldn't go home um, later that day so I was like yay <laughs> that's uh, that's wonderful news so right now I'm gonna insert a clip I wasn't and I mentioned this in the clip too, but I wasn't 100% sure that I wanted to film myself like that. But it's real life. And I want to portray, like, I, I want the truth to come as real as it is. Like, I keep, don't get me wrong, I keep a lot of things private on social media. But something like this, I feel like because we are in a time that's so different for everyone that sharing our experiences when something like this happens you never know who you can be helping so though I was a little hesitant and reluctant on sharing I'm I'm really glad that I did so I'm gonna go ahead and insert a clip um, of myself in my hospital bed this was the morning after my night in the hospital hey guys um... I wasn't sure if I was gonna film here or not just because I didn't really want to put like I didn't want to put this up like this but this is real um, as I already told you guys I was admitted yesterday um, to the hospital for a kidney infection and um, I think the worst part about it, other than the excruciating pain that I was in, um, was the fact that I had to be here by myself. They said that because I was not in active labor, I didn't have a baby or anything like that, that uh, my husband couldn't be with me. And I legit cried when he had to leave. They let him stay with me. They let him stay with me up until the part that um, I was admitted. And only because to be admitted, they have to give you a COVID test. And my results came back negative. So I was admitted because of the shortage of tests. And, you know, there was really no reason for Jose to stay with me medically. So he had to leave. And I think that was probably the worst part of all of this. Right now they're just 
monitoring the baby. I've been doing pretty well, thank God. And uh, they said that if this goes well, I'm monitoring him, then I'll be able to go home soon. <sighs> Which I cannot tell y'all. Like, I know it's only been one night that I was away from my family. But just the fact that I had to be here alone. It just really sucks. Like, I understand all the precautions that they take and why they do it. And completely grateful because I've received amazing care. It just really sucked being here by myself. And having to talk to my kids having to talk to my kids through a tablet I'm on the mother baby floor normally uh, you know my kids could come and go but it's just the fact that they couldn't and I had to be here by myself it just really sucked and it was really hard for me and the only way I got through it was through prayer and worship, worshiping Jesus when I felt like I was going to go crazy. Um, I know I look a hot mess, but I just wanted to show you guys this raw and real clip um, because this is how it is now. I'm going to insert this um, to just give you guys some, you know, some real footage, vulnerable and real footage. Um, so let's get back to the <laughs> original video. Well, at that point, I was just ready to go home. Um, I really just wanted to be out of there. I really just wanted to, like, oh, I was getting, um, I was getting really restless. And I remember texting my husband, like, just telling him, like, how anxious I was being and how I couldn't, like, like, everything started bothering me, you know? And he would just, it's okay, just calm down, you know, you're going to be out of there soon. Really try to keep it together. <laughs> it was really hard. Um, but again, this is just where I kind of had to just, like refocus my my mind you know not so much on the situation that i was in but like what god protected me from you know what he protected my baby from and how he kept us safe and just worship and uh, just kind of calm down you know because i was gonna get out of there i wasn't gonna stay there i wasn't you know I was gonna get out of there <laughs> a lot of time went by and I remember like I'm like man what the heck you know I should have heard something by now like how come I haven't heard anything about when I'm gonna be leaving <coughs> so I asked the nurse that was uh, taking care of me all morning and I was like so have we heard anything about when I'll be able to get out of here or like you know what's gonna determine that or whatever she was like, has anyone been in to speak to you? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and, um, so she went, um, to confirm with the doctor. And she comes back and she was like, oh, um, we're just going to hook you up to the monitor uh, one last time. And, uh, as long as the baby is good, then, um, you know, we can get you out of here. I was like, all right, sounds good to me. <laughs> and then I remember she comes shortly after that. She comes to check my um, to check my blood pressure. And she was like, this is the highest that your blood pressure has been this whole time. Um, my I guess my heart was racing. You know, I was just excited to go home. She was like, I shouldn't have told you anything. Like she starts making jokes about how I got super excited. So that kind of like made my vitals all wonky. And then she hooks the baby up to the monitor and he wasn't cooperating. He was moving around so much that it was basically saying he didn't have a heartbeat and he needed to be 
like stable you know I needed to have stable vitals in order for them to uh, let me go so I was just like oh my gosh this is crazy like this cannot be happening I was like I need to get out of here I cannot I cannot stay here I kind of just try to calm down and then before you know it um she comes in with my discharge papers and I was ready to go thank god because like I said I was just I was ready to I was ready to leave I was ready to leave she comes in she starts explaining everything to me you know the medications that I have to be on um, and again I did insert another clip um, from when I was ready to go home and I'm gonna go ahead and insert that right now hey y'all um, I just got the news that I am finally able to go home these last 24 hours have been oh, a real drag but thank god that uh, the infection is getting better uh, my body responded really well to the meds uh, the baby is doing really really good um, so I just give God glory my husband and my kids are on their way to pick me up and I I really can't wait to see them I miss them so much um, but uh, I just wanted to hop in <laughs> um, and just share this moment of joy and excitement and uh, gratitude um, with y'all. So uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to see my baby. So at that point, I was just super excited to be leaving. Um, I really, I felt really blessed and just really thankful to the Lord um, for just, for getting me through that. Um, because it was, it was quite the experience and for anybody going through that, being hospitalized alone in the midst of a pandemic, though I was only there for one night, it was the most difficult night throughout this pregnancy. And for anyone going through that, I just want to encourage y'all just to stay focused on God and stay focused on the good and, um, really just put your your mind and your focus on him and and try not to focus on being stuck somewhere alone because I know that that can really drive you crazy and like I said earlier if I would t if I would focus on that enough then I start to feel like I I can't explain it like it was almost like my body was like cringing, you know, like I was like, oh my gosh, like I have to get out of here and I have to just take a step back and just, you know, breathe <laughs> and really just re refocus my thoughts and refocus my mind. And, um, you know, for any, for anybody pregnant or, or even not pregnant, you know that just has to be in that hospital setting by themselves just know that though though you may physically and naturally be alone you are never really alone god is always with you and you just have to allow him to carry you through that process and it's not an easy one <laughs> by no means is it an easy process but he does pull you through so far my pregnancy is going really well um that was just about the only complication that i had i didn't have you know i haven't had any anything worse happen thank god that now the uti is under control um i just had another pediatric appointment recently and everything is looking really well I'm just really overwhelmed with so many emotions right now <sighs> soon i'm gonna have another baby and it's just it's all becoming really real you know months ago it was like oh we have time we have time we have time and I was like oh my gosh no that that time has come that time is almost here <laughs> but yeah that is it for me y'all I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I just really hope that my experience you know brought some sort of comfort to anyone that may be going through something similar pregnant or not um, just know that you're not alone and 
I know that being pregnant during a time like this is extremely difficult, but it is really important to just keep your faith and keep your mind and your thoughts focused on Christ. And I guarantee you, he will get you through. He did for me. It was definitely really hard uh, to go through that. Um, but I always say that if my experiences can bless just one person, then it will all have been worth it. And I know that God doesn't put, um, I know he doesn't put me through anything in vain. And I just I pray that y'all are blessed by, by my, my story. <laughs> but yeah, I really felt that it was important for me to share, um, my experience, especially the raw footage. That was really hard. But praise God for <laughs> pushing through. Um, but yeah, I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. God bless y'all today and always. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.